Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are doing a dog grooming video. We are doing a major transformation on this cute doodle right here, and we are going to be making her pastel and hot pink all over. So the inspiration for this groom is her body is going to be a pastel pink, and her ears, top knot, and tail are going to be hot pink. This groom took me a little over four hours to complete, and the very first thing that I wanted to do with her is get some of the prep work out of the way, because yes, this is a creative groom, but we also need to do the usual grooming. So I am taking my 10 blade and I am doing her sanitary or potty areas where I go around the anus, the vulva, uh, the tummy area, just the regular, usual sanitary areas that we do. And I'm also doing her toenails, getting those nice and short, and shaving out her paw pads with my 40 blade. I am going to be disabling comments on this video because creative grooming is a very well-known thing in the grooming industry, but people who are not in the grooming industry tend to have a problem with it. So just to kind of avoid some of the negative conflict, I'm just going to completely take out comments altogether. This specific dog has been getting groomed since she was eight weeks old and she's around five to seven years old now. She is very used to the process. Her owner absolutely loves creative creative grooms, and this dog is also very, very, very well behaved for them as well. She can stand for long periods of time. She's always been very well behaved for them. So don't think I'm torturing her. I'm not. This is just what we do. Like we do this all the time. I've been grooming her for over two years now. The next thing I am doing is I am going over her entire body with my number four blade. Now she is not bathed yet, so I am clipping a dirty coat, which is typically a major thing I would never do because it's not good for the blades and it just makes it look choppy when you do it like this. But because of the color that we are going to be putting on, it's easier to put it on a dirty coat. So I'm just kind of roughing in her haircut a little bit with my four blade, and then we'll do the color, the bath, and then at the very end, we will of course tighten up and touch up the haircut. So I'm taking my number four blade down her back, her body, brisket area, the legs, the feet, everything, and the head up to the occiput area. And because this is a very time consuming thing, not every dog is a good candidate for creative grooms. If you have a dog that you wanna get a creative groom on and they are very wiggly, unruly, or not used to getting groomed, there's no way that this would be possible. She is one of my only clients that I can do this with because she is so used to the process and she's so well behaved and she's been getting groomed for literally her whole life. So just keep that in mind that if you do want something like this, make sure you are starting young with your dog and make sure you are getting them used to the process. So after the haircut is kind of roughed in, I'm going to start on the tail area. And the color I am using is from Opaws. This is not sponsored. I bought all of this color myself. All the color that I used and all the products was around $150. So it is very expensive to buy all of this stuff. And the color I'm using on her tail is by Opaws. It is a semi-permanent color and it is in the color Shocking Pink. So it's a very bright, hot, vibrant pink, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And this is going over her entire tail. Now, the color that I'm using is by Opaws, like I said. It is 110% safe to use on dogs. There is no peroxide, bleach, um, no harmful chemicals. It is incredibly safe to use on dogs. I'm not using human color on her. I am using color that was formulated specifically for dogs. And another thing is, yes, she does get breaks. I let her sit down. I let her get down off the table whenever she wants or whenever, even if she doesn't want to, I still make her, you know, get down and stretch her legs. 
the thing about her is she she's so used to this process that even when I tell her to sit down and like take a break she will still stand right back up but I do give her breaks as many as she wants after the color is on her tail, I am just lightly wrapping it in with aluminum foil just to avoid any color transfer on the rest of her body. And while that is processing, I am moving on to her face. So yes, I did poodle a doodle. I am giving her a clean face with my number 10 blade. I just thought it would make the groom look cuter and because I didn't feel comfortable using any color on her face directly, just cause I didn't wanna get it, like I didn't want her to ingest it or get it in her eyes. That's just a lot of color to go on the face. I decided to give her a clean face cause I thought it would make her look a little cuter cuter and I thought it would pull the whole groom together. And I am doing her face in a number 10 blade and you wanna make sure you are changing your blades regularly because they do get hot and you do not want a hot blade on the face. So make sure you're switching your blades regularly when you are doing a clean face. Once I have her face shaved, I am going to be putting that same hot pink color all over her top knot area and on both of her ears. This was definitely time consuming. I think doing both of her ears and her top knot took over 30 minutes to put the color on because there is quite a bit of hair up there and you wanna make sure you're fully saturating the color and getting it in there really, really nicely so that way when you rinse it out, it doesn't have any weird patchiness to it. And this is the only time where she kind of like squirms a little bit. She doesn't like her ears touched all that much. So I just try to let her rest her head on my arm while I'm painting the color on. And I just try to get it done as quickly as possible. I don't want to force her through it. And I'm just using a regular like human hair dye brush. It's just easier than using just my hands. I do use my hands quite a bit when I'm doing creative grooms, but when it comes to like delicate areas like this, I like to use a brush so I can get the color really, really precise in certain areas. and I am just carefully holding her head still. I am not clenching her mouth shut or I'm not forcing her. I'm just holding her head still so she doesn't move her head and I put color in the wrong spot. And yes, you go through a lot of gloves when you're doing a creative groom because this stuff will stain your hands. So I go through quite a few pairs of gloves, that's for sure. Once her head, ears, and tail had the color on, it is time to get going on the body. So on her body, I am using the Opaws semi-permanent color in bubblegum pink, and this is being painted all over her entire body. I think I went through about four to five bottles of this, and I the reason for doing this, because we are going to be using another product on her body, is I wanted to pre-paint her body first because the color depositing shampoo that I'm going to be using, I wanted it to have something to grab onto. So on her dirty coat, I painted her whole body bubblegum pink. That way in the bath after I shampoo her and then use the color depositing shampoo, those particles would have other pink particles to stick to, if that makes sense. And I really do think it helped because her body is supposed to be all pastel pink. And I feel like if I just use the color depositing shampoo, I feel like it wouldn't have worked as well. So I'm really glad that I did this first. This was incredibly time consuming going over the whole body like this. But of course, Willow was an excellent, perfect statue for all of this. She has like, she's gotten so many creative grooms, so many different colors. It's just, it's such a blast to do this kind of thing and just try something new. I believe this is her first ever full body color. I could be wrong, but this was definitely time consuming. That is for sure. And I'm just kind of rubbing it in with my hands, going back in with the brush down her legs. I'm not putting it near her anus or her vulva. I'm going around those areas. It's just not necessary to have color there. Um, but her legs, body, stomach, you know, 
all that is getting color. And about 40 minutes later, after I was fully done, here is what she looked like fully painted. Holy crap, look at all of that color. That is a lot of pink. Now it looks very bright right now, but remember it's supposed to be pastel. So when we rinse it off, it's gonna be a really nice pastel pink. And yeah, she is fully covered from the top of her head down to her tail with that color. Just absolutely insane. And then it was time to get her in the bath and start rinsing her down. And one thing that is very important about any color, whether it be human color or dog color, is you wanna really make sure you're rinsing really good and getting it all out. So I'm just going over her whole body, getting all that color out, and you'll start to see her body kind of change color, going to like that hot bubblegum pink to a nice pastel pink. And then once I have most of the color rinsed out from before, I'm going over her whole body and shampooing it because I did start out on a dirty coat and to finish it, we need a nice clean coat. And the color depositing shampoo that I'm gonna be using, you don't wanna use any conditioner beforehand. So for the bath, I'm just using regular hypoallergenic shampoo that we use on most of our dogs in the salon. And then I'm going over her face with Blueberry Facial. It is a tear-free shampoo for dogs' faces. And I'm making sure I concentrate some of that on her head and her ears, just to make sure I get all that color out. And as you can see, she was still bleeding quite a bit of pink. So I'm just making sure it's all nice and shampooed and nice and rinsed out. And then I'm just going over her whole body again, making sure I get all the shampoo out. Again, checking to make sure that the water is running clear. And now it is time for the final step of the color, and that is the color depositing shampoo. This is again from Opaws. This is the funky color shampoo, and this is in the shade Vivid Pink. And this is going to go over the whole entire body. Basically, it's a shampoo that deposits some color. I believe they make the same thing for humans. And on a damp coat, after she is shampooed, I am lathering her entire body up in this. And as you can see, as it's going on the body, it's turning a really nice lavender purple color. But when you rinse it off, it is a bubblegum pink color. And you wanna make sure that you're lathering it really well. You're using a generous amount. And I'm making sure I get her back, her neck, belly, legs, feet, like every area that I put the bubblegum pink color on, that's where I'm going to be putting the color depositing shampoo on. And I think it worked okay. It definitely smelled really, really good. Like I absolutely loved the smell of this stuff. The one things that I don't like about it is it does have to sit for about 30 to 45 minutes, which kind of sucks. But one thing that Willow liked about it is she got like a full half hour massage because <laughs> I had to rub it in her whole body. And I think she really enjoyed getting her whole body rubbed down. I'm sure that felt really good. And again, I'm just staying away from her private parts because it's just not necessary to put this product in her private part. So I'm just kind of focusing on her legs and her back and, you know, all that jazz. 
And for those of you who do not understand creative grooming, I really want to encourage you to look it up and just see how big and safe the industry is. Because I feel like a lot of people see a dog with color on and they automatically think neglect and animal abuse when that is not the case. So if you are someone who is not educated on creative grooming, I really want to encourage you to look it up and just get some more information on it. So after an hour of processing, rinsing, and drying, it is time for the final step of tightening up her haircut. So I'm going over her whole body again with my number four blade, because when you pre-clip a dirty coat, after you bathe and dry it, that hair will fluff up because it's nice and clean. And you really wanna make sure you're going over the whole body again, otherwise the haircut is just gonna look really uneven and really choppy. And I also decided to give her poodle feet as well, so she got a clean face and clean feet. And then I tightened up her top knot and her ears, trimmed her tail, you know, just did all of the finishing touches for the haircut, and she was ready to be done. So after four, almost five hours of work, here is what Willow turned out like. She is a full pastel Barbie dog moment. This was a lot of fun. The one thing that happened, and this is just kind of what happens with dog color, some of the color stayed more on her elbows and her feet. So it looks a little bit kind of tie-dye choppy there. But here's what she looked like before, and we transformed her into this. Regardless of the tie-dyeness on her feet and elbows, I think it looks really cute, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And her body is just a really nice, light, pastel pink color. This was a lot of fun, and the owner absolutely loved it. She did so, so good. I'm really happy that I got to do this and share this video with you guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please go down and give this video a huge thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you are new here. I would greatly appreciate it. As to the rest of you, I love you guys so very much, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Time to clean up. Bye!